Hello, hello, and welcome to this exciting Friday night edition of Animal World Live with me, Brent Leo Smith. It is so wonderful uh, to greet you from a chilly Hutzbreit on the edge of the Greater Kruger National Park in South Africa. Uh, we are experiencing a bit of a cold bite at the moment. There was even snow in the Karoo. So a big cold front moving through Southern Africa at the moment. And fortunately, we're right up in the north. So we're still a bit warmer than the rest of the country. Who have we got with us today? Hello, Barbara, Boo, Dov, Julie, Brenda, Rosalind, Vicky, Katie, Joanne, TJS Widget, Barbara Russell, Mars, Jan, Shadulu fan, and Vicky. And of course, thank you, Kalena, already. Thank you so much. We really appreciate, oh, excuse me, all your support. Now, I've got a warm drink with me tonight instead of my usual cold drink. Hello, Sketch Cats, Dylan and Danny. Tamara, Bonnie, Angelina. Um, yeah, so very unusual for the crew to get snow. It's uh, normally a semi-desert. It does get bitterly cold. However, um, I was reading an article today that there were communities, their children of 12 to 14 years old who had not seen snow or rain in their lives. Isn't that absolutely incredible? Hello, Annie. Um, hello, Nunya. Hello, Katie. So, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Now, of course, on this week, we've had a busy week, and I'm going to chat to you more about that. But uh, a couple of weeks ago on an Animal World Live, and uh, I hadn't had a chance to watch the clips, and I got surprised by, I think, what was it? It was a baby, baby mongoose. That I, it was a baby Janet that I got so excited about. Thank you, Sketch Cats! Um, so, I've decided, we've decided, as a collective, of course, that uh, I'm not going to be allowed to watch the live camera highlights and uh, I'm going to watch them for the first time with you so we're going to do that right now so the first live camera highlight coming up right now oh it's a rhino and looks to be the young rhino bull who frequents the area around Seskunt, uh the water hole there so always nice to see them now he's often with another rhino whose nickname is hope or no hope actually he's got a little baby but there has been a big bull stomping around near and might have pushed him off to be off by himself i absolutely love that top down angle very unique not something we get to see too often apart from on our live bush cams now for those of you who haven't yet and have what been watching painted dog tv uh go if you want to see these watch these cameras live pop across to live bush cams by painted dog tv and there's a lot of action happening on there and we're going to cover that uh quite shortly so there's been very very busy last couple of weeks and lots of exciting things there we go thank you charles has popped up the uh link to live bush cams if you guys haven't please go subscribe um it'd be wonderful to have you over there as well now, what is next, I wonder? Ah, it is the Janet. Is the baby back? Or has the baby got so big it's not a baby anymore? That is the baby. It's got so big. Oh, that's wonderful. Yay. That is still a sub-adult, so that's that little one we saw. And I need to go straighten that camera, I think. <laughs> I will do that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so... Isn't that wonderful to catch up with a little baby Janet? Now that's right outside. That's a couple of feet away from where we're sitting now at Critter Cam. Mm. Yum, Milo. Uh, Elona, yes, uh, the guys do an amazing job maintaining and capturing that footage. It takes a lot of time to go through live bush cams to see what we've seen and make sure we don't miss anything. 
I'm, I'm very fortunate that that doesn't fall on my shoulders yet. I think we've got so many cameras up at the moment that we are all going to take a turn, sort of um, take a turn. What's, what's the plan there, Vian? Once a day, one, one camera a day or one camera a week per person. Uh, we, we're still working that. Everybody's going to get a camera and it's their job to go through the footage. So every time there's movement on those cameras, it gets recorded back to our servers here. But sometimes it could be a nightjar flying through or a moth and that obviously has to get deleted and sorted and the, the good footage needs to be named. So it is quite labor intensive keeping an eye on live bush cams. Now for our subscribers, um, our patrons, we're going to be seeing if anyone might be possibly interested in curating one of those cameras. So keep a look out um, on the news coming out on Patreon and we'll keep you updated about that. Okay. It is indeed a lot of work, but well worth it. Now, what is next, I do wonder? Oh, it is. Ah, actually, I'm going to quiz you guys on that. Let's see for our birders out there uh, who can tell me what is the beautiful bird drinking at Criticam. I just absolutely love uh, the colors of winter with all the leaves spread around and that blue, blue sky that we, uh, that we get here. So it is, it is absolutely wonderful. Uh, Barbara, it is indeed a Franklin. I'd like to know which Franklin, uh, but nice and fast there, Barbara. Um, Dylan, I actually have witnessed a lion hunt. It was a very unsuccessful one. When did we see that, Sunday? Two days ago. With a giraffe. Well, I think it was two days ago. The days just fall into each other at the moment. So, um, yes, there's been some incredible sightings recently. And all that stuff is going to be coming out shortly. Hello, Anna in the UK. Yes, Franklin. Uh, not a crested TD Kid one. Not a dove, CNAC. It's an owl. Can you get him? So, where's my torch? Oh, Charles. Can someone bring me my big lead lenser, please? Okay, I'm going to keep very, very still. Oh, I see him there. Now, one of the most special things at this particular residence is our resident barred owlets. And at this time of the night, Natal Spurfile, well done, Charles. Um, at this time of the night, oh, it's going to call as well. I'm going to put it on too bright, so I'm going to put it on half setting. Um, are you ready, Zander? Look there, and sorry about that. There is the little barred owlet. Well, keep an eye on him, Zander. See if he turns around. How's that? Is that a bit better? Now, the light you see pulsating there is actually the light waves coming from the torch. I'm going to see if I can get him to look at us. He's not buying my fake alarm calls. Oh, he's off. Hopefully he'll come back. Always good to have a torch nearby. Um, okay, let's have a look here. Exactly, Sketch Cats, he wants to... Um, come on come on camera um yes whoever said natal spur file Charles, that is correct there well done um and i saw birds aren't my thing says cougar man um katie an excellent question from katie where do janets go during the day well katie they tend to hide in trees they make actually quite nice little nests and they'll line them with warm things um feathers from birds they eat and all sorts but they do actually live in generally hollows and trees or, or in rocks when they're around and uh, that's where they live and around the house here we've got quite a lot of perfect trees some leadwoods um, some knob thorns with broken branches that have nice uh, sort of big holes in them and that's where they'll live during the day My calls were so bad it flew off. Exactly, Dov. <laughs> Can I come live with you? What an incredible place to be. 
with nature. It is we're very very lucky to live where they are. Liz, yes, their tail is as long as their body, in some cases longer than their body, and uh, it helps with balance when they're pouncing through the trees. Uh, fern liner, we do actually see wild cats, African wild cats, from time to time. Exactly, Redstone Prime. Ledwood, a big game estate, where we do quite a bit of our filming, is indeed named after a Ledwood. There's a massive Ledwood that I estimate to be over a thousand years old there. Uh, Timothy, we are using a Sony, I can't remember all the figures, camera to, to, to stream this from. Okay. Um... I have been lucky enough to see Caracal uh, in the wild, as well as black-footed cats. Uh, Chat Noir, I've been wanting to ask any of the wild dogs you rehomed expecting. Unfortunately, not yet um, from the Melita pack. They have not bumped into males. They've been very close to a group of males, but they haven't bumped into them yet. That's the bard owl calling, guys. Um, Tina, sand cats are endemic to the Sahara, so we don't get in anywhere near Southern Africa, unfortunately. Okay, Vim, what have we got next on from the live bush camps? Ah, our little neighborhood diker. Um, that is spelled D-U-I-K-E-R, and it derives from Afrikaans, which is a diker, a diver, because it seems to just dive into the bush when disturbed. And we've got quite a few that hang around the house. And, of course, they're big fans of the Criticam Pan. And you can just see those winter colors I was talking about. And soon all those trees behind will be devoid of leaves and uh, quite sparse. But I'm definitely going to have to go uh, play with that camera angle. I think we've got some ideas. Ah, dusty, yes. Uh, the, 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 the sounds out here are incredible. I mean, just from here, we hear lion, hyena, elephant. Um, so we're very, very lucky. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so what have we got next, Vim? And give me a warning, because I don't know how many we've got when we come to the end. Oh, ah, it's, it's Thor's enemy number one, the chattering squirrel. He likes to sit in the tree and alarm at Thor when he, she tries to chase them. And uh, they are far too fast for her to catch. Um, yeah, so that's Chloe's enemy number one. She doesn't like squirrels very much. And I can't say the word squirrel too loudly. Otherwise, she'll come charging out. Uh, Miha, yes, we do have leopards um, in uh, the reserve where I live. In the, the state that I live, we do have leopards. There's a female leopard and cubs that are seen uh, quite regularly. The doggy is very well. She might make an appearance a little bit later. Um, but for now, let's concentrate on live bush cams. What's next? Ah, the fat civet. There we go. They are absolutely stunning. African civet. Uh, coming for a drink. Now, as I said, quite often a lot of the creatures are attracted to the pan, not only for water, uh, but for the potential of prey. So water attracts lots of other things. I think there's a bush baby behind that civet. You just see its eye. Or is it a, a car? It's a car driving past. Oh dear. On the main road out. Um, yeah, so they're quite often attracted for, for food. Um, insects and small mammals like mice might come through to the pan. And of course that falls well within a civet and genet's um, prey base. It is an African civet cenac. We only have two civet species in Africa. Uh, this is the largest one, and the other is called a palm civet, um, or a nandini, uh, but they do not occur in South Africa. Uh, dusty, indeed, they are nocturnal. So civets and genets are mostly nocturnal. Sometimes they will move around during the day when they are not under threat by other predators. So the biggest threat to a lot of the nocturnal species, like genets and civets, and what makes them 
get moving at the time they do. It was, if they try and move in at the times when the other predators are not as active. So lion, leopard and in particular uh, will are most active for the last hour before sunset and the first three hours after sunset. So quite a lot of your smaller nocturnal mammals uh, depending on where you are and everything a lot of behaviors area specific rather than species specific depending on different pressures will only get moving sort of quite late at night to avoid bumping into leopards and lions when they're at their most active uh, Dylan certain animals are do have radio collars but it's normally the predators um, currently there are a few around and also the elephants um, which are part of the Elephants Alive program, we do see certain animals that have collars, and of course, quite a lot of the wild dog packs in this area are collared. Okay, what's next? Oh, VM's favorite, the slender mongoose. Whoop, he was just checking for a meal. Now, they, although they're not that much bigger than a, a, a squirrel, are great hunters of squirrels. So they do hunt squirrels quite regularly. So there we go. That's VM's, one of VM's favorite, the slender mongoose. Very, very beautiful, lithe little predators and incredibly quick and great climbers. And they can be uh, a bit frustrating when we are uh, tracking leopards or lions and you've been on tracks for a while and suddenly you hear and the squirrels start and you start thinking you're getting very close to the leopard and you start getting quieter and walking and then all of a sudden a slender mongoose dashes off and you realize that's what the leopard or what the squirrel was alarming at uh, dov it is not intentional what generally happens when critter cam is crooked it means a warthog has rubbed its bottom against it and it is no longer straight okay so that is the end of critter of the critters of the live cams and we've got uh, a nice little bit of action coming up for you those who haven't watched it now as a lot of you know we are not only traversing the Reedsprate game reserve which is made up of leadwood kaya and uh, blowbunk we are now uh, traversing the incredible pridelands which is also the home to eco training so we've been getting some incredible sightings there and i must stop saying incredible so much because otherwise Zander will hit me as also I'm not allowed to say so too much otherwise that they will hit me so so and incredible are off the table for the rest of the evening um, and yes yeah, so <laughs> okay so we got some amazing interaction between the two apex predators of pridelands the lions and spotted hyenas We've got lions fighting hyenas, we're not sure what's happened. The, my, the lions we had this morning, look, my have made a kill. Just saw hyenas dashing out of here, looking. There are the lions, there are the lions, let's go in there. Lots of hyena action, this is absolutely incredible. Lion coming, racing in. Oh my goodness guys, this is happening live right now. One of the puppies has just come out of the den. This is off the live bush cams coming through um, from Lapalala Wilderness. One of the puppies is out of the den. Um, hopefully it'll come back into frame now. You can see all those incredible puppies right there. Isn't that absolutely amazing? We will finish watching the lions and hyenas, but the puppies have not been out of the den yet. This could be first. And of course, for once, our, all our plans go according to plan. And it happened during Animal World Live. So we are going to watch this right now. 
um, and we might see another one. Isn't that amazing? So, um, right, right now, puppies and little wild dogs. They are the cutest things in the world. Mom just took it back into the den. Let's just see what happens. Let's just stick here for a while. You can see how the other pack members are absolutely ecstatic to meet the latest members of the Lapalala pack of wild dogs. Uh, Mom being very attentive um, and making sure they don't misbehave. And she'll see if she thinks any of the other pack members are too rambunctious, and that's because of joy and love, not because they're trying to kill or eat the puppies, that she will um, chase them off. And you can see she's almost standing guard at the entrance of the den. Oh my goodness, this is so amazing. And uh, we're, we're getting to this, but look at them. We think there could be as many as 14. We're not 100% sure yet. Oh, little ones, they're going back into the hole. Oh, they're so small. That is incredible. You can see mom with her heavily engorged uh, mammary glands. Aren't those little squeaks just the best? Oh, there's another one. He's come, trying to come out. Mom's trying to keep the other dogs away. Now, you guys have got to realize that this is over 300 kilometers from where we're sitting now. Um, isn't that absolutely amazing? <gasps> oh. Can't ha ask for a better Friday night, can you? Let's have a look. Every time mom goes off to try scold one of the adults for getting too close, it looks like the little ones are trying to get out. Okay, come on, you little, come on, you little thing, climb. Now, what's incredible with uh, little wild dogs, so they are about 15 or 16 days old now, but they are capable of eating meat at as young as 10 days. So the fact that they've started coming out, guys, it is going to be absolutely amazing. The amount of interactions we're going to get to see on that camera and the cameras at the waterhole and around are going to be incredible because those little puppies are going to start exploring soon. This is just the best, best news. And um, VM, am I going to completely throw everything out of tune by saying we'll come back to the lions a little bit later and let's catch up with the wild dogs quickly on what they've been up to up until this point where a puppy actually came out. Ah, yes, it's going to be possible. VM is a genius, so I had no doubt. The ro wild dog rolling. Okay, we're rolling it. Uh, welcome back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, VM killed a mouse and a keyboard, but we're back. But don't worry. Uh, we're all here. Um, so, sorry about that, guys. Um, so, I'm just going to just give everyone a second to jump back on. Um, and there was a question I saw um, from me here. Uh, he says, Brent, I went to Kenya and they told me that they had wiped them out because they were good, too good at being predators, killing everything. Well, that's half true. Um, wild dogs were, a little, were persecuted very heavily uh, up until probably the 70s and 80s. And by that time, a lot of damage had been done. The biggest threats, however, to, to wild dog, uh, outside of pure persecution from human beings, thank you, Marcy, um, is the fact that they are very prone to canine diseases, particularly distemper and rabies, 
and uh, snaring, where people are snaring for other animals, such as impala or whatnot, a snare can do some serious damage to them. But yes, so um, it is, it is uh, a big threat, but they were not completely wiped out in Kenya. They are making a bit of a comeback in a few areas. So that is very good to hear. Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome back. Thank you so much, Marcy. Um, Joanne, yay. Um, thanks everyone. Okay, so um, what we were saying is that um, we will get back to the, the lions and hyenas of Pridelands because those puppies came out for the first time tonight and that is just so amazing. Uh, and uh, we're going to show you what a little bit of what it took uh, to get that those live cams up. As I said, it's about 300 kilometers from here. So enjoy. Absolutely incredible and again without people like Lapalala Wilderness and Endangered Wildlife Trust projects like this would not be possible and we're just very very privileged to be part of that now we've got lots of questions so I'm just gonna take a second well thank you so much mrs. Johnson um, to answer these here um, cat 3 can the other dogs accidentally injure or kill the pups it is a possibility but in wild dog social structures it's very very unusual if they do injure them it's normally by accident uh, when playing and they get a little bit too boisterous but you can see when they're very small mom is very very protective over the den and the only other one that I've actually seen manage to get down in there with her is the alpha male and then I saw another one where's that gone Uh, Mar Marisa, how many uh, hectares is the boma? It's about, I'd guess, probably close on three hectares in total. So quite a big boma. And it's very cleverly designed with two areas. So when we had to go do the installation, or if something breaks, like the water pipes that provide them with water, etc., uh, what is happening is that... Well, what has happened? What is... What is... What happens is that the... Uh, dogs are lured into a separate section that can be closed off 
um, with a dead impala. Now, Lapalala is a fenced reserve, so they have impala that they catch and cull um, to make sure they don't get an overpopulation of impala in the reserve. And while the animals, whether uh, the wild dogs in particular, are in the boma, they are being fed. And I think that was a question from Shamsung. So they are being fed those impala. So those impala would have been taken off by, uh, from the reserve, and hopefully the dogs are going to be there. So next year, they'll have to take off less impala because the dogs will be doing it for them. Ah, there we go, Dov. Exactly what you're asking. What are those walls parallel? That's the entrance to the boma. And you'll see there's some different shots of us f getting ready, getting all the stuff up. Um, those are the... Because this boma is not only... It hasn't only had wild dogs in it. It's had lions, it's had cheetahs, it's had elephants. So those big parallel walls are actually for um, the, the trucks to reverse up to. Uh, and that so they can release animals straight through you can see we did a bit of tree climbing we had to make sure all the cables and everything uh, were dog height or above dog height that they can jump um, because bearing wasn't an option because we wouldn't have had time we didn't want to we wanted to take as short a time as possible um, so the female could get back to her puppies and also the doggies like to dig so if they had dug out a cable they would have almost certainly chewed it so we flew it uh, in technical terms um, you fly a cable so we put it through to the top of the trees some of those trees were quite small and we had to do some balancing thank you so much sketch cats yes the squeals are awesome um, there we go there's some excellent questions about how many how many puppies so we we know there were 14, one wasn't looking too good, so there might be 13. And uh, Dusty Mar uh, Marcel says, how many puppies usually survive maybe past a year? So their, their mortality rate is very, very high. Um, it is normally about 70%. Uh, but in this case, they are in a protected area uh, in the Boma. So that mortality rate is probably going to be a lot less because they're going to be able to grow up to three or four months without having to encounter lions and etc. Now, this is actually very good for them. It doesn't put them in danger. They will still have the instincts they need to try avoid lions, leopards, hyenas, other predators. Uh, and of course, the adult dogs have been doing that their whole lives. Now, of course, for those of you who don't know, this is a very, very special population of wild dogs in Southern Africa. They're genetically distinct from the other populations. And in 2017, the whole Waterberg, and they're also the last free-roaming wild dogs that haven't had to be reintroduced outside of, of course, Kruger, places like that. So there were there were five left, and uh, they've managed to get their numbers up to about 24. So it's very important for these dogs, uh, these 10 to 14 puppies to survive, hopefully into adulthood, to bolster the Waterberg wild dog population. Now, even though they're such a small population, because they're so genetically distinct, and wild dogs in general are a very genetically diverse species, the fact that they went down to such a low number is not a problem with them starting to repopulate. Uh, Redstone Prime, is there a reason they don't get fed live prey? Ethical reasons, for example. Um, it's very, very difficult and very, very expensive to catch and uh, impala and put live prey. The, the second problem is that that live prey would panic, run into the fences, the dogs would follow, those fences are electrified. And it's very important that these dogs learn to have a healthy fear of an electric fence. Because if they do leave Lapalala Wilderness, there is a possibility they might go onto farmland where they would be in threat again. Liz, how do we know there were 13 or 14 pups? Um, well, that's because she gave birth in a, a very strange place and they were moved um, into a, a different area and she then moved them again. So the guys were actually able to watch her move the pups. She didn't give birth in the, in the den. She gave birth under a bush, but they were moved into the den. Yes, John, I can, uh, Joe, sorry, I can fall out of trees. Everyone has seen that clip. Thank you for reminding me about falling out of trees. 
Marisa, that's a very, very good question. After the dogs are released, will you keep this cam up for future animals in the enclosure? There's a possibility for that. There's also, there is a, we're going to be working with Lapalala. We might move those cameras onto other things like brown hyena dens, um, or possibly even into some other projects that I can't just talk about now. But yes, we're not going to be losing the Lapalala cameras. They're just going to be going on different things once the dogs are released. Lavender, so when the pups leave the den, are they expected to keep up with the pack? Not while they're that small. They will explore and play around the den for three to four months, and then at four to five months, they will start moving with the pack. And look, you can see how tiny they are. Um, to give you an idea, uh, they're probably not much bigger than my hand at the moment. Oh, and we got some questions there. I saw Skitch. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch up. Um, Dylan, no, I haven't seen. Um, I haven't seen wild dogs uh, climb. They're, they're not very good climbers. Uh, I've seen them. They, they're very good jumpers and very good diggers, but not good climbers. Um, and then I saw there's one from Skitch Cats. I'm thinking of going on a volunteer program. Who would you recommend? I would strongly recommend the Endangered Wildlife Trust Volunteer Program. They do, do incredible stuff. And you can find all that information, I'm pretty sure, on their website. And um, I think there are very specific things. And uh, it's still early days. I don't want to get everyone too excited. But we are working with the Endangered Wildlife Trust where you'll be able to do a conservation safari. So if you're interested in wild dogs or whatnot, you can actually go along possibly on a collaring or a monitoring session of wild dogs. And look at that, the whole pack together jumping straight over the water hole. Now, this is excitement. And this is not a f excitement from food. This is excitement from the pups almost coming out and they want to meet and greet the pups. So this is quite normal dog behavior. I saw something that I saw. Zander would like to ask the question. Yes, Zandaki. Aha. An excellent question from Zander. How often do they move their dens? Now, in the wild, it all depends. So, a lot of people used to think wild dogs and hyenas moved their dens due to uh, invasions of, well, not invasions, but uh, an over excess of fleas and ticks and other creatures like that. But the more research we seem to be able to do on them, and uh, they actually generally will put up with the fleas and ticks, and it is when they get threatened by predators like lions and leopards, that is generally when they'll move a den. And we saw that with the Ledwood hyena clan. When the male lion killed that baby hyena, they moved that den within a couple of days. Okay, we've got some great questions coming in here. Um, I'm just trying to catch up with them. I think I saw one. Okay, guys, if I've missed a question, just pop it on again. Um, I'm sorry, there's so many great questions coming in. There were some questions asked. Uh, Nunya would like to know a little bit of info about the folks. Um, up there. So that is an incredible area. It is called Lapalala Wilderness. It was started in 1983 uh, by a man called Clive Walker and now I've completely gone black on the second man. <laughs> but anyway, basically they found this very beautiful pristine part of the Waterberg and uh, they started through various different things um, buying it up and now it is, it is a conservation area. It's a privately owned by a trust um, but it is very important in terms of endangered species breeding, black and white rhino, and a roan antelope, and they've also got good healthy populations of sable antelope, and it is a very, very important protected area in the Waterberg biosphere. So those dogs are going to be released into the reserve. It is 50,000 hectares. It's over 100,000 acres. And this pack of dogs, before they were moved into the reserve, were averaging a home range of about 25,000 hectares, and lapalala has got a very serious fence, and we are hoping that that will keep the dogs in and keep them safe. It is a beautiful reserve, 
uh, very very different from the low felt and as you can see from the image he's showing there and again very healthy populations of both black and white rhino they've got incredible anti-poaching guys um, up there so at the moment they haven't had to dehorn and that whole area is on lockdown so uh, locked down from a poaching point of view and everything is monitored so they're doing an absolutely incredible job protecting a very important biome um, it's the second largest protected uh, piece of the Waterberg, uh, and it's the largest uh, that is privately run. There we go, that's the endangered roan antelope, or endangered in South Africa, and they've got a very important breeding program, and these guys have actually just recently been released out of their boma, and you might see one of them, I'm not sure if it's in this clip or one of the other clips, one of them has a collar on that they are monitoring them. It is in this one, Zander tells me. So, beautiful antelope, uh, related to sable. There we go. You can see there the male at the back. It's got a oh, sorry, the female. The back's got a collar on. Cenac, uh, the pack is ten adults, and we're not exactly sure how many puppies. Redstone Prime, excellent question. Dogs do not make their own dens. Uh, they, like war dogs and hyenas, will use abandoned art fark burrows. So they will excavate them to make them to their this that will to what they like but they do not however make their own dens indeed it is a swarm of puppies and I, every time i think about it it just brings a great big smile to my face dylan all animals in theory are under th uh, threat from snakes but the wild dog denning season falls within our colder months so the snakes aren't too active but yes there is a possibility of a threat for snakes Shadulu fan, I think I answered it's 100,000 acres or 50,000 hectares. There we go. Thank you. My dad is correct. Dale Parker and Clive Walker um, founded La Palala in 1983. Dov, uh, how do you tell the sex of a wild dog? Um, well, by the obvious bit between the legs. Uh, the males generally are a little bit bigger there. Thank you, Cenac. James. Johnson, which predator is the biggest threat to the wild dogs? Well, outside of man, um, it is lions. And I've unfortunately seen lions kill dogs on more than one occasion. But lions are the sort of biggest natural predator threat to wild dogs. Another one is crocodiles. And you will watch wild dogs when they approach water deep bodies of water to drink because they love small bodies of water to play in lion. But they are very, very nervous around bodies of water that hold crocodiles. Here we go. Lots of love for the roan. Um, his puppies, puppies. Um, James Johnson, the greatest threat to this pack is, that, is, is, is human beings. Um, whether it be by poisoning or snaring. Um, but the greatest threat to wild dogs throughout Africa is lack of habitat. Uh, unlike other predators, they do need excessively large areas. And uh, your average pack home range in this part of the world is about 80,000 acres um, in other parts of the world can be even bigger and I was chatting to Grant um, Beverly from the Endangered Wildlife Trust and one of their Kruger packs is now using a home range of 95,000 acres that is over I mean sorry 95,000 hectares which is over 200,000 acres so that is the thing the wild dogs need great big open spaces to survive Tom, yes, that's correct. Yeah, we saw a lion kill a wild dog live with me when I was at Safari Live. Ah, there's a question there. Miss Kirsty, how, how will the pups learn to hunt if kept in the enclosure? Now, there's a big misconception that a lot of people have that wild animals need to be taught to do things. Um, and the best example I can use, Miss Kirsty, we don't need to be taught how to breathe. Um, you don't generally need to be taught... Um, things like that so it is all within their instincts they are able to hunt if they get hungry and however with wild dogs that whole that all the adults are expert hunters already and have been living wild and free so they will indeed the puppies will indeed pick up from them but they actually don't need to be taught to hunt neither do lions neither do leopards or jaguars and a lot of these fake conservation 
Um, and I say they are fake uh, conservation people who keep big cats and whatnot in cages and say, oh, I've got to teach them how to hunt. It is absolute twaddle. If a lion gets hungry, it will hunt. Cat 3, what would lure the dogs off the property? Just generally, they, they utilize large spaces. So they can run. Um, it could be pressure from lions. It could be uh, lack of a prey. Um, fortunately, I think at La Palala, there are lions. Um, however, it's not a big population. The Waterberg is quite a different biome. It doesn't have the same carrying capacity as the Lofeld. So the dogs are used to living with lions. And there's plenty enough prey. So fingers crossed that they stay on La Palala. And the other really positive thing about what we are what we've done here with La Palala Wilderness and the Endangered Wildlife Trust is that those are now known as the La Palala Wild Dogs. And La Palala has got a very, very big presence in the Waterberg. And we are hoping that if those dogs do wander off and are seen or found, people will call La Palala and think twice about trying to harm them. Um, they will be monitored with VHF collars and as well as satellite collars. Dov, I'm sure squirrels or rodents will enter the boma. Um, the squirrels will probably be able to stick away from the, uh, the dogs. Uh, rodents probably as well, but you never know. When those puppies are out, they might chase a rat or two. Uh, Dylan, wild dogs do not need to hibernate. Sorry about that. Yes, thank you for um, sticking with us. We are having a, little, a bit of fun um, with uh, a computer today. And um, yes, hopefully VM doesn't kill any more mouse, mice or keyboards. And of course, when I'm saying VM, VM, no, VM says his mouse is dead, he got quite angry at his mouse earlier. I will have to get him a new mouse. Of course, this is not a live mouse. This is a computer mouse. We're not murdering mice behind camera while you're not watching. Um, Thanks guys. Yes, we're back. Okay, so uh, before any more of the gremlins get to us um, We were tr busy showing you uh, some amazing lion and hyena interaction that happened last week on Thursday, so about a week ago uh, just before we went to La Palala. Uh, so let's have a look at that now We've got lions fighting hyenas. We're not sure what's happened. The, my, the lions we had this morning the might have made a kill just saw hyenas dashing out of here, looking. There are the lions, there are the lions. Let's go in there. Lots of hyena action. This is absolutely incredible. Lion coming, racing in.
So what I think is happening here is the lions were heading straight towards the hyena's den and these hyenas are actually luring them away from the den by inciting a fight even though there's no carcass or meat to fight over. Initially I thought they were fighting over a carcass but now I'm almost certain that these hyenas are trying to keep the lions away from their den. So that was absolutely incredible. I think the hyenas were leading these lions away from their den and they've now succeeded. The hyenas have moved off. I think they're going to be keeping a close lookout on the lions though. Isn't that amazing? How smart were those hyenas? Those lions were heading straight towards the den. Uh, see Redstone Prime? Yes, indeed, it is the same den you do see uh, with Taylor occasionally on Wild Earth. And we are hoping in the not too distant future to have a live camera up at that active hyena den. That is part of our Pride Lens expansion program that we're busy with. So very, very, very cool stuff. Now, a lot of people are wondering why are those hyenas foaming or salivating? Or they're actually not foaming, they're salivating. Now, you'll notice quite a lot of animals do that, even uh, domestic dogs, when they get excited. Um, and when they're fighting, big cats, leopards, lions will also do that. Now, the hyena that seemed to be salivating, salivating, there's no such word, salivating the most was actually the main instigator and she seemed to be getting much closer to the lions than the others, so possibly more excited. And um, when quite a few different animals get excited, um, uh, part of that is they just start salivating. Yes, exactly, Laura's life dog training and dog vlogs. Hyenas are very clever. There's been quite a few uh, studies on that recently that makes us think that, uh, well, I think hyenas have been sort of popped up on top um, with chimps for being one of the most intelligent animals out there. Now, for example, uh, hyenas are one of the only animals where being just completely strong isn't the only most important thing. And you can be the lowest ranked hyena and with sneakiness, conniving and planning, you can take over a whole clan. And one of the interesting things in some of the research papers that have been done on hyenas, uh, the, the, the lower ranking hyenas tend to be smarter because it's harder for them to get food and whatnot. So they've got to think out of the box in ways of how to get food, raise their young better and be able to climb the social social ladder or the social hierarchy so very very interesting stuff and as with a lot of animals we're learning new stuff all the time we never know what exactly what's going on even if we like to think we do okay now we do have um, a, a little bit more news tonight and unfortunately it is quite some sad news and um We've all come to love the Ritzbrate pride of lions. And um, Hahani, the mother to Bucket and Bibi, unfortunately had to be put down last week. And the images of her towards the end were, were, were quite, quite sad to see. So we've decided to just celebrate her life. And she lost a lot of weight, became skin and bones. Uh, management of the reserve decided to step in uh, in case she had TB. So far, all the signs are pointing towards towards TB, um, tuberculosis, for that feline tuberculosis. And um, she probably caught it from warthog or kudu, both are carriers. And she lost a lot of weight and there was lots of sign in her lungs that one of her lungs had collapsed. So the reserve management decided uh, to put her down. We will not know if it was TB for another three months. That's how long it takes to get a definitive test on TB. So on a little bit of a sad note, we're going to end tonight's Animal World Live with a tribute to the most incredible lioness of Root Spray, who gave us our beloved Bucket and BB, Hahani. You are 
by the summer, we were the tide, the clearest of azure, bright as your eyes, golden skin sundress, you were the skies, and I see the color I've known all my life, we are timeless, we are timeless. Washing over the sand on my feet Time is an ocean and I'm lost to see Tomorrow won't find us, but I still believe Searching for you is looking for me We are timeless So very, very sad and don't worry guys, Bucket and BB are fine. They're still with the pride. Nyaleti um, is still in really good condition. She doesn't seem to be showing any signs. We will not know for quite some time whether any of the other animals are affected in the pride. However, some lions can carry TB and, and don't show any real signs of it or symptoms of it and live long full lives. So it just depends. So, But we will keep you updated on that. But the rest of the pride are still fine and um, will be doing well and we will be catching up with them soon. And uh, of course, thank you so much for joining us on tonight's Animal World Live. We apologize profusely for the two, a few technical glitches we had tonight invaded by gremlins. And of course, as always, a big thank you to everyone who makes it possible. You, our patrons, and um, our subscribers on YouTube and our Super Chat fans, thank you so much. Of course, to the Stenbach family, Led Lenza. Um, and if you want to dress like us, get some Painted Dog TV swag, um, head across uh, to Teespring, where the amazing Brian Joubert is doing some great designs for us. And of course, to Zunder on camera, Viem, the mouse killer, and Charles for uh, working around in the background. It's been great. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you and we can't wake up. We can't wait to wake up every morning to do it again.